Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we will be talking about dihedral angles which are also known as torsional angles. Okay. And we will talk about the dihedral angles and we will also talk about the importance of dihedral angles in maintaining the protein structure, especially the protein secondary structure. And we will also see and talk about Ramachandran plot which gives us the idea about what kind of torsional angle will ultimately fit to what type of secondary structure of the proteins. So let's see the relation between torsional angles and the Ramachandran plot and protein structure. So let's begin with this. The idea of torsional angles or dihedral angles originated from a three dimensional space angle idea. Now what does that mean? If you look at here, the whole idea of torsional angles we'll talk about for the proteins or the amino acid chain which is also known as polypeptide. So if you look at this polypeptide, it contains one, two, three different amino acid chains linked with one another. Now if you look at here, there is an N terminal of the amino acid. This is the N terminal and this is the C terminal of the amino acid. Okay. So these are the two different terminals that we depict here. Now in this case, the peptide bonds are this one, C O N H. This will be known as the peptide bond because these are separate amino acids linked with this bond here. Now one thing you should look very carefully here is that this nitrogen always carry lone pair of electron. As a result, in a resonance property, this lone pair of electron can form a, another bond between this C carbonyl carbon and the nitrogen. So as they form this bond, a partial uh, a side bond between carbonyl carbon and nitrogen previously there was all one bond so now it kind of behave like two bonds in between the carbonyl carbon and the nitrogen that are involved in a peptide linkage now that is called a peptide bond and as I told you if you look at here that peptide bond contains two bond characteristics so it's a it's a partially double bond character of the peptide bond. It acts like partially double bonded uh, bond. Now in this case, this partial double bonds that we can see and here you see the carbonyl, uh, this is the alpha carbon that are placed in between. Now as a result of this double bond, partial double bond nature of the peptide linkage, this amino acids or, or all those molecules cannot rotate around this bond. It will be unable to rotate around this partial double bond character. Okay? Because it is kind of a double bond feature, it, it is restricted to rotate. So all those amino acids this side and this side cannot rotate. On the other hand, if you look here, there are two other bonds that you also find. One is this carbonyl carbon and C alpha carbon, the bond between them, this one. Another one is the bond between the carbonyl carbon, uh, the, the nitrogen and the carbonyl carbon. So these are the, uh, the alpha carbon, sorry. So these are the two bonds that we can see. The alpha carbon in the middle, in the left you see the bond between nitrogen and the alpha carbon. This is one type of bond. And the other bond is the bond between carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon. Those are two different bonds. And those bonds have specific names. Here the bond between the N C alpha is known as the phi bond and the bond between C alpha C is known as the psi bond. So let me light, write them here. Uh, this is phi bond, this is psi bond. Two different bonds are there. Now this is up to the link and only the peptide bond. But now you will see how we talk about angles in here. The simple thing I can tell you about the dihedral angles is that let us begin with some structure say hydrogen. If you look at the structure of hydrogen, we can break it down like two, two hydrogen linked with each other. So there is no chance of formation of any angle or bond. So to define nitrogen geom geometry of the hydrogen, what you can say is that the two hydrogen molecules, they are separate by a specific distance. When you, when you, when you say the distance, it defines how they are linked and what is the total geometry. So 
only distance is sufficient for telling the geometry of hydrogen. Now, if you take water, the structure of water says somehow like this. Okay. So, oxygen attached to it to hydrogen. Earlier, you only say the distance and you get the geometry, right. But here, let us say you know the distance between oxygen and water, this, this hydrogen and water and this hydrogen and water, you know that and you are telling that distances. Let us say this is distance x, this is y. Now, my question is, will it clear, will it give you the clear view of the geometry? The answer is no, because distance is not enough. In this case, you also tell, you need, need to tell, uh, talk about the angle between this two hand of hydrogen linked with oxygen. So, this angle is required. So, for this three molecule content in this case, three atom content actually in this case, the three they are linked, you need to use two distance and one angle to get the geometry correct. On the other hand, if you take hydrogen peroxide for example, I do not know whether I can see the bottom one. So, let me draw it here. So, let us say now we take hydrogen peroxide H2O2. This is another molecule and four different uh, atoms are linked now. And in this case, let us say we have O, O, H, H. This is what we have here. Okay? I do not think whether you can see me, but this is how the structure look like, for example, of hydrogen peroxide. Now, in this case, as there are four point, so this was the two point, we only distance is enough, three points, two distance, one angle. Now, there are four point here. In this case, in this four point conditions, we need to talk about two different angles. If you think one is here, another one is here, two different angles we need to talk about. Just if you look at the structure of peptide bond here, you will find also four different points N, C alpha, C, N. These are the four different regions you will find in between. Okay? N, C alpha, C. In, in this between, you will find four different points 1, 2, 3, 4. So, four different points are present. So, the similar structure here. So, whenever you have four different points and the molecule will be in the three dimensional shape, in that case, there are angles that are formed between planes instead of forming between lines. Because you know, if I draw a line, it will be a two dimensional. If I draw a plane, three dimensional space. So, that is what we are talking about here. So, if you look at here, I told you the angle between this two line and this two line, but we are now calculating this as plane. So, let us imagine this plane, this line as a plane, imagine this line as another plane. So, what we have, we have two different planes attached with one another, something like that. This is one plane, this is another plane attached with each other like that. And there will be an angle between these two planes and that angle will be known as the torsional angle or dihedral angle. You can see that thing here. From this, the distance between N, C alpha and C, you will also find that angle because you know in this C alpha, hydrogen is attached, R is attached, right? R is the side chain, hydrogen is attached. So, if you look at here, you will find that plane, you will find that four points and in each of those side, this is a four point, this is another four point. So, from that, what you will find? There will be two planes creating angles in this bond, two more planes creating angles in this bond, right? So, there will be two different angles, one in the between the N and C alpha, there two different planes creating angle known as phi angle and on the other hand, another between C alpha and C two different planes again creating another angle known as psi. So, phi angle in the phi bond, psi angle in the psi bond. Now, these angles can change. They can go broad, narrower or broader. This angle can change. So, these properties will be changing. If you look at here, those 
properties will change and the angles are changing distance are changing and due to the change of those angles the rotation quality will also vary the rotation quality will also change for example you say from these two different bonds the rotations are possible because they are not double bonds they are single bond so rotation around that bond is possible so we have two different angles in which the rotation is possible because there will be a limit to each of those angles right now how much those rotations are possible if it's not involved with any sort of angle formation or if it's not even a three dimensional structure then we can say it can move any place in the same plane be but protein is a three dimensional structure and we know it's not only the rotation around the bond but while it's rotating the angle is also changing because due to this angle uh, the the rotation is uh, the rotation is defined by these angles actually okay so let's say they have a specific angle of plus 60 degree so once they have the angle of plus 60 degree the rotation will be possible up to a certain extent only and only up to that certain extent the protein structure can be stable prior to that or, or let's say over that angle or if you change the angle then only the structure will be changed so for a specific angle there will be a specific way of rotation and that will give a specific structure to the peptide chain so let's say uh, if the angle is plus 160 degree they are going to rotate at certain extent that is going to give them the idea of or the structure of beta sheet as a secondary structure okay because these amino acids will try to rotate they try to interact they try to form hydrogen bonds between themselves to finally produce a fully functional three dimensional protein now how they will fold and how they those amino acids will interact that complete thing will depend on the, the degree of angle and that will regulate the rotational freedom of all those bonds that will ultimately create whether that amino acid sequence having the specific degree of angles can ultimately form alpha helix or beta sheet or any loop structure okay so that is the idea of torsional angles so if you know the torsional angles it will be very important and helpful for us to identify that whether this polypeptide chain is going to form beta helix beta beta sheet or alpha helix or parallel beta beta sheet or anti parallel beta sheet or is it going to form a right handed helix or a left handed helix we can get all these ideas by looking at the torsional angles or dihedral angles because they are the same things here okay that is all about the dihedral angles